Thank you for choosing Pet Playgrounds for your dog enclosure needs. In this installation video, we will show you how to measure for your proposed enclosure, how to assemble and wrap your gate with the fencing materials that we have provided, and we'll show you a few tricks that our certified professional installers know that you can use to make our fencing system work exactly the way you need. Our system has been designed to use your house as one side to enclose the fence. In this particular install, the customer is a breeder and wants to separate sections, one for her dogs to play and run around, but another section in her kennel-based area. The great thing about our dog fence system is that it's so flexible that it can be used for any residential or commercial use. Let's get started. The first step is to measure the length of the kit that you need to order from Pet Playgrounds. To do this, simply start walking from where you want to start the enclosure and count your steps. Walk normally, not heel to toe. Once you're done, multiply that number by two and a half. That will give you the length you need to order in linear feet. In some cases, you might have a deck that you also want to enclose. Make sure to include them in your measurements. To place an order, please visit petplaygrounds.com order. First, you'll select the height. Then you will select how many linear feet you want. And in the final step, you will select what options you want. For most customers, the only option they need is a gate. However, if you are planning an advanced installation, you may need extra corner posts, which is required when making a 45 degree turn. Or you may want to convert your dog fence to our max strength dog fence kit for dogs that tend to chew through just about everything. This customer has already chosen a six foot tall fence, so that's what you'll see us install today. We also offer four and five foot fencing options. The installation procedure is very similar for all three, Step 1. Measure, Plan, and Layout The first step is to unpack all the materials that you received and start laying out your no-dig sleeves approximately 20 to 25 feet from each other. If you ordered a gate, make sure you also lay out the two no-dig sleeves that you will use to install your gate posts. They are included in your kit. If you have lots of trees in your yard, you can use them as replacements for our posts. This will make your install faster and will also help blend in the fence into your natural surroundings. We'll show you how in just a few moments. A note for contractors and advanced do-it-yourselfers. For aesthetic purposes, use a string to help you lay out your fence. This will ensure the portion of your fence that needs to be straight is indeed straight. Step 2. Install your no-dig sleeves. Our no-dig sleeves come pre-drilled with a bolt to make it easier to level your posts. First, push the no-dig sleeve into the ground with your hands as much as you can. Then place the driving cap right on the no-dig sleeve. Use a medium-sized sledgehammer to pound the sleeve into the ground. If you come across a rock or hard ground, simply move the sleeve two to three feet in any direction until you completely avoid the obstacle. Our system has been designed to be incredibly flexible. So if you come across an obstacle, you can modify your plan on the fly to accommodate whatever you run into. Sleeves should be driven down at least 50% or until they are solid. If it is not possible to drive your no-dig sleeve all the way down, you can simply cut it with a reciprocating saw. Step three, install your posts. Now you are simply going to place the post into the no-dig sleeve. Use the provided magnetic level to plumb your posts front to back and right to left. While the bolt will help level your posts, you may need to use up to two nails per post to achieve a perfect level. Determine how much and which direction the post needs to go to make it plumb. Put your foot at the base of the post, then hold the top of the post firmly. Tilt and pull it using your weight while holding the base with your foot. This will bend the post within the sleeve in the direction needed to get it plumb. Bend it a little bit at a time. Now it's time to add post collars to your posts. Our kits now come with round post collars with pre-installed eye lags. 
This is another feature that is completely unique to pet playgrounds. For a six foot fence, you should place your post collars at three feet for the bottom cable and six feet for the top cable. For four and five foot fences, you should place your post collars two feet off the ground for the bottom cable. For the top cable, you should place your post collars at four feet and five feet respectively. Just make sure to leave one quarter inch of space for your decorative cap. If you are unable to get your no dig sleeve into the ground all the way, you can use a reciprocating saw to cut the top of the posts to make them all the same height. This is not required, but it is an optional step that you can take for aesthetic purposes. You can use trees and other structures as posts. To use a tree as a post, first, pre-drill holes in the same locations for the cables you did on the posts. Use a screwdriver or a wrench to twist the eye bolt into the tree or any other structure. If you're using a tree, make sure the tree is at least six inches in diameter. When using a structure like a shed, make sure that it is solid wood to hold the eye lag and you are not too close to the edge of the structure. A note for contractors and advanced do-it-yourselfers. If you have lots of trees that you want to use as post replacements, simply mark one post with white chalk with the proper measurements and you'll save yourself quite a bit of time measuring every tree individually. Step four, install your post corner kit. The greatest tension on any post is at the top where the tension cable goes through it. Every corner post that is not a tree or structure should utilize double braces to counteract the tension pulled by the cables. Take two of the posts that you received in your kit and drive them into the ground a few inches with your sledgehammer. Attach the cap to the brace band with a nut provided and secure one of the brace posts into the brace band. Then do the same thing with the remaining posts. Our fencing system is designed to use your home as one side of your fence. And our kits come with two full post corner kits, one start post and one end post. What's the difference between a start and a stop post and a full post corner kit? A start and stop post is installed flush to your home and only requires one angled post to secure it. A full corner post requires two angled posts on both sides of the angle that you are creating. If you are not using your house to act as one side of your fence, you will need to order one more post corner kit to convert the included start and stop posts to full corner post kits. Step five, install the cable. Your 12 gauge braided steel cable will come on a spool. Simply run the 12 gauge tension cable through each eye lag on your post collars or trees if you're using trees as post replacements. Create rectangular sections that are closed every 40 to 60 feet using the provided gripple, also known as cam lock, to attach the ends and close the rectangles. This will create a top rail and bottom rail for your fence. You will attach the fencing materials to this cable. Your cable will go into the gripple easily, but it will not come out. Use a pair of pliers to pull both sides of your cable tightly. There is no need to over tighten. Trim your cable leaving a few inches to spare. To make your fence look nice and neat, you will hog ring the excess cable to the section you just created. This is not required, but it is an optional step you can take for aesthetic purposes. Step six. Install the 1800 plus pound galvanized rubber coated welded wire. Roll out the galvanized rubber coated welded wire for an entire section with an extra few inches of material, which is always needed. Use the provided hog ringer to attach it to the cable. Use your foot to bend and create a flap that is six inches to 12 inches that lays flat on the ground. Pull the welded wire material to the next post or tree and ring it on the other side of the posts. Then go back and ring the welded wire to the cable every three feet. You will be creating a six inch to one foot flare that can be staked. The exact length of the flare will vary depending on the slope of your landscape. For corners, use your feet to contour the materials to your terrain, trees and corners. This particular material was chosen for the bottom half of the fence due to its incredible flexibility. Use your hog ringer to attach the material to itself. This material will be secured to the ground in a later step. In some cases, you might have a large rock. If you have a similar situation, simply cut the welded wire and split it like shown. It really is that easy. Step seven, install the polypropylene mesh. 
Just like you did with the welded wire, give yourself a few extra inches and start by attaching the cleaner flat top end of the mesh to the top cable with a hog wringer. Unroll enough polypropylene to make it to the next post or tree. Then go back securing the top edge of the mesh to the top cable, hog wringing it every two to three feet apart. Allow the polypropylene mesh to overlap with the metal hex wire as shown. Hog ring the metal hex wire and the polypropylene mesh together every three feet where they naturally meet. For angles, the polypropylene mesh can be cut, then overlapped at any angle to match the terrain. Use the provided heavy-duty black zip ties to straighten the fencing material and connect every corner post as shown. Step 8. Install stakes into the ground. Our stakes are kinked to help them hold into the ground well. Stakes should be put in a 45-degree angle, about every 3 to 4 feet. Eventually, the ground will grow through the flares in the part of the welded wire that is flat on the ground, adding to the strength of the fence and hiding that part of the fence. You will be able to mow your lawn right over the dig guard in these stakes with no problem. If you are unable to get your stake into the ground due to a rock or another issue, simply choose another location. Step 9. Finish attaching the fence to the house. In step 3, we showed you the difference between a full corner post kit and start and stop post kit. At this point, you should have all your posts installed, including the posts that will be flush to your house. Simply wrap these posts, just like we've done with all the others. Step 10. Protect other areas. In some cases, you might have a deck that you do not want your dogs to access. You can use the same methods to fence in this area as we've used throughout this installation process. You can use posts just as we did fencing in the rest of the yard. But for aesthetic purposes, we've used a reciprocating saw to cut the posts to the height of the deck. We used eye lags in other areas of this deck just as we did when we used trees as post replacements. We ran the cable the same way we did with the rest of the fencing area. In this particular install, this breeder has a kennel with special flooring outside, as she sometimes needs to separate a male from a female during breeding season. We installed our fencing materials and put the special flooring on top of the dig guard. Since this special flooring is hard to destroy, only a few stakes were necessary to secure this area. This is what's so great about our unique fencing system. It's easily customizable based on your needs. One of the best things about our Pet Playgrounds dog fencing solution is how flexible our system is. Our customer has changed her mind slightly where her fence should be installed because she needs to tend her new privacy trees that were planted. With our system, we first cut the tension cable that secures the entire fence. Then we use wire snips to remove the hog rings that were attached to the cable system. And then we remove the posts. If you just installed your fence, you should be able to remove the no-dig sleeve quite easily. It usually takes a week or so for it to bond to the soil. However, in some instances, the best way to change the layout of your fence after it has been installed is to simply leave the no-dig sleeve in your soil. You can simply fill it with topsoil and seed it with grass, and it'll disappear. This is what makes our fencing system great for renters. Step 11. Assemble and wrap your gate. Pet Playgrounds offers standard 5-foot wide gates that are enough for most commercial mowers to get through. But we also offer wider 8-foot wide and 14-foot wide gates as well. If you have a standard 5-foot wide gate, the first step is to set the sleeves and posts 5 feet 2 inches apart. Install the no-dig sleeves and posts just like we did before and level each post. In some cases, you'll find that where you want your gate isn't level, so you could have your posts at different heights. To fix this, grab the top bar and simply match the posts together. Measure and cut your posts as needed. This is an optional step and is only required for aesthetic purposes. Now, lay out the structure of your gate on the ground using the vertical side pipes and horizontal top-bottom pipes. Our gates no longer need a center support pipe. Connect the outer pieces together using the black corner elbows. Secure each corner elbow using the provided four self-tapping screws. Attach each 1 and 3 8 black aluminum hole cap with screw on each post.
Then test the top bar to see if it's level. Because our ground was not level, we'll have to cut the top bar with a reciprocating saw to make our gate perfectly level. Once level, you can secure the aluminum hole cap. A note for contractors and advanced do-it-yourselfers. If you would like a custom width, you simply need to measure properly and use a reciprocating saw. On one side of the gate, measure 12 inches from the top and 12 inches from the bottom. Attach one female hinge at each point using the nuts and bolts provided. On the opposite side, attach the gate latches making sure that they are 12 inches from the top and bottom, as you did with the hinges. Attach using the nuts and bolts provided with a padlock hole on the latch at the bottom. Hook the turnbuckle, located at the end of the corner tension wire, into the center of the corner elbow on the top of the gate. Loop the tension wire through the wire clamp and then through the corner elbow on the opposite side on the bottom. Feed the wire through the wire clamp. Tighten the wire and then tighten the wire clamp. Then tighten the turnbuckle. Check to make sure the gate is square and level. Repeat on the other side. The process is the same for our larger 6x8 and 6x14 gates. However, the sleeves are much larger to accommodate for the extra size. Use the welded wire and polypropylene mesh to cover the gate. First, use a pair of wire snips to cut the needed amount of material. Lay the welded wire on the ground. Pre-cut spaces in the welded wire for gate latches and hinges. Work the material until it is as tight and straight as it can be for aesthetic purposes. Once you have wrapped the material around, use the hog wringer to attach the materials together. Now do the same thing with the polypropylene mesh and hog ring both materials together with your gate. Stand the assembled gate frame upright and connect it to your fence. Hang your gate to the frame using the male hinges. Use your foot to support the gate to help guide the gate to the frame. That's it! Make sure everything opens up nicely. You can make adjustments by adjusting the hinges and latches. Now all that's left to do is let your dog run free. Still have questions? You can call us 24-7 with our toll-free number at 1-800-985-9202. Please visit us on Facebook and send us pictures and videos of your dogs running free. Thank you for choosing Pet Playgrounds.